Hello and welcome to the Trigonometry and Pre-Calculus Tutor Volume 2. Uh, in this set of lessons we're going to continue where we left off with the end of the Trig and Pre-Calculus Volume 1 and we're going to continue building our skills in those essential, essential techniques that you're going to need to know to do well in Pre-Calculus uh, in trigonometry and all of these skills are going to be absolutely essential for you to do well in calculus one, calculus two and beyond. So every single topic that we're going to cover in this sequence of lessons uh, is really going to be important for you to take on with you and not forget so that when you get to calculus one and beyond and also courses like physics and chemistry that, that you'll have these tools in your brain and you'll, you'll know exactly what you need to do to solve those problems. So what we're big picture going to do in this set of lessons is we're going to concentrate quite a bit on trigonometric identities, which are kind of like relations that people have proven over the years to be true. And you'll find that in your classes, such as, you know, trig and pre-calculus and of course calculus and physics and even sometimes chemistry and, and other classes, you'll find that you'll be solving an equation and you'll have a trig function like a sine or a cotangent or a secant or something involved in your equation and you'll try to solve it but then you realize you might run into a roadblock so you'll need to use a trig identity to simplify that equation or to reduce it into something easier to work with right and so what we're going to do is learn you know those essential essential trig identities that are so important for you to remember now the first thing I want to say uh, before we go any farther is that this is volume two of a trig and pre-calculus sequence so if you have just picked this, this, uh, lesson, this set of lessons up and you haven't watched any of my lessons before, I'm confident that you'll understand what I'm saying, absolutely confident. However, there are some essential skills that are covered in Volume 1 of Trig and Precalculus, Tutor, that you really need to know in order to do well in this sequence of lessons, right? So make sure, if you haven't looked at my Trig and Precalculus Volume 1, go and do that now. There's absolutely essential topics in there on the unit circle. What is a sine? What is a cosine? What is a complex number? Um, how do you graph these things? All of those things are very, very important and absolutely essential. And what we're doing here is we're building on those lessons, building on those concepts, and taking them one level deeper to give you more practice. So make sure you go and look at those. Uh, and certainly, if you come across something I'm saying here in this lesson that doesn't quite make sense, or you're like, boy, I don't remember like what a tangent really looks like, or what that really is in the unit circle, then you need to go back and review that because I cover it all there. So having said that, what we're going to do in this sequence of lessons is pretty much hit the trig identities you know, pretty hard, um, and so that you'll become familiar with them and know how to use them. We'll learn how to prove, uh, prove relations that are, require trig identities. We'll also talk a good deal about solving trigonometric equations, which just means solving an equation that has a trig function like a sine or a cosine or a tangent um, in the equation when you're trying to solve for theta or something like that and you've got it wrapped up in the sine or a cosine function we need to kind of think about how to solve those equations so we're going to cover that here we're also going to cover law of sines law of cosines which are things that you kind of uh, use in all branches of, of math and science really and even in engineering classes you'll be using the law of sines and the law of cosines so everything in here, believe me, I wouldn't take my time to put it in here if I didn't think it was important. So every single topic I'm putting in this set of lessons is important. So watch them in sequence and watch them two or three times if you need to and get your pencil and paper out and solve your own problems uh, after you've viewed these problems. Solve these problems that you see in this lesson again. Go to your textbook, solve extra problems for extra practice, and I guarantee you that your skills in trig and pre-calculus will be not only good but absolutely fantastic and you'll just be able to handle whatever's thrown at you. So having said that, uh, at this point uh, after studying trig and pre-calculus you should have been exposed to the concept of sine, cosine, and tangent, right? And uh, those are the fundamental trig identities, the fundamental trig identities that we use all the time. And when you when you first introduce them in any kind of class, whether it's geometry or trigonometry or whatever, you're always taught how to, how to think about sine and cosine and tangent in terms of triangles, right? Opposite side over adjacent side, or opposite side over hypotenuse, or adjacent over hypotenuse, or something like that. Those are the uh, definitions in terms of a triangle, right, for these trig functions. And then you talk about the unit circle, and we start talking about how to look at an angle and figure out the sine and the cosine of it by thinking about 
how it, it, it looks in relation to the unit circle, right? So we've covered all that before. But it turns out that these trigonometric functions, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant, those are, those are the fundamental uh, trig uh, uh, functions, that they're related to each other also. You can write a sine in terms of a cosecant. You can write a cosine in terms of a secant function and those kinds of things. Most books will just write it all down and say, here, remember these, right? But that's kind of hard to do. So I'm going to show you something in this section number uh, one here that I actually use every single time I solve a trig problem. And, and I'm talking about way into advanced math and science classes. When I'm dealing with trig functions, I do this myself. So this is something I use myself. Let me show you what I call the trig rainbow. And you'll see why I call it that in a second. What I'm going to do is move over to this side of the board. And I'm going to write what I'm going to call the trig rainbow. What you need to do is list the trig functions in their logical order. right? So this is how I do it. And this is how you should do it too. Sine, that comes first. Cosine, tangent. Let me stop there for a second and, and just make you realize when you say these functions out loud, sine, cosine, tangent, that's usually how most people say them. Then you continue on and you say cotangent, secant, and cosecant. This is the order that you should sort of rattle them off when you say them out loud because it'll, you'll see in a moment it helps you. So when you say them, you should say sine, cosine, tangent, then cotangent, secant, cosecant. Kind of get used to saying it in this order. All right. Now let me show you why that's important because when you write them in this order, you kind of make a little rainbow. Uh, this one, let me write it like this. This guy, the tangent goes with the cotangent, the cosine goes with the secant, and the sine goes with the cosecant. That's why I call it the trig rainbow. And the reason we do that is because of the following. You can write some very important identities just by looking at this trig rainbow. So what you say is you say, sine, right, of theta is equal to 1 over, 1 over what? 1 over cosecant theta. This is your very first trig identity, right? What it's saying is that when you take the sine of a number, the sine of an angle, it's the same thing as taking 1 over the cosecant of the same angle. That's a trig identity. That's a fundamental identity. It's saying that any time you see sine in an equation, or in an expression, or in a relation, anywhere. You could, if you wanted to, take it out and rewrite it as one over cosecant. It's an absolute equality. That's why there's an equal sign there. For any angle you stick in here, it's the same as one over this. So if you're solving a problem where it's helpful, for whatever reason, to put a cosecant in there, I don't know, maybe you've got another cosecant and you want to cancel them, right? So maybe you'd want to put a cosecant in there. Makes your, maybe it makes your equation simpler then you can make this relation. Now most books would tell you to just remember this. That's hard to remember. So don't remember that. Remember the trig rainbow and realize that sine is 1 over cosecant. Then you don't have to remember all these things. You just remember the rainbow, which is very simple to remember. Okay, so let's go on and continue down. You'll probably see the pattern. Cosine of, the, of an angle is 1 over the secant. All right, very simple to remember. Let's keep going. Tangent of theta is one over cotangent theta. All right, so you see how they just come fall out naturally from the rainbow. Cosine is one over secant. Tangent is one over cotangent. So again, anytime you see one of these functions in any problem you want, you're totally free to replace it by one of these guys. Why would you want to do that? Well, you just have to get experience. You might need to do that to cancel or to simplify something. Uh, and so on. Now we can continue down the line. We're not done. We just rewrote for sine, cosine, tangent. Cotangent is 1 over tangent. It goes the other way. Cotangent is 1 over tangent. Right? Secant is 1 over cosine. Just like this. And then cosecant is 1 over sine. Let me draw like a little line here so that we don't get confused. We really have six relations. These six relations right here. We have something for sine, cosine, and tangent that we can rewrite in terms of. And we have something for cotangent, secant, and cosecant that we can write in terms of. And again, these identities will work some problems in a minute where you'll see where it might be useful 
to use these guys. But in any case, usually when you go into a book, into a textbook, they'll give you this in a table and they'll say, remember them. Don't remember them. Remember this trig rainbow. Then you don't have to mess with this to re with remembering this. You just remember this sequence and you write them down. And I promise you, on my most advanced classes that I've ever taken, if I have a trig function, I always write sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. So I can kind of remember how I need to, you know, write these expressions. All right. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that even though I have six relations here, six identities here, there's really only three fundamental identities on the board. The, some of these are, are really just rewri rewriting the original uh, guy. So they're kind of duplicates. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. If we go and do something like, like this, let's take the first one here, right? Uh, sine of theta is one over cosecant theta, right? So this is what we wrote down here. Now, what if I wanted to solve, this is an equation. This is absolutely equal. So I can solve for cosecant theta if I want to. Just pretend that it's just something on the bottom of this fraction I want to solve for. How would I, how would I do that? Well, I would multiply both sides by cosecant. So I would have cosecant theta times sine theta on the left equals one on the right. That's just giving it over here. And then I would divide by sine. So I would have cosecant theta is equal to one over sine theta. All I did was move the cosecant here, move the sine over there, just because I wanted to solve for cosecant. So I have cosecant theta is one over sine theta. Cosecant theta is one over sine theta. So you see, this uh, identity is really a, a rewriting the one that I have over here, right? Uh, you can kind of look at all of them this way. The cotangent being equal to this is really this, this uh, uh, identity rewritten. And this guy here is really this guy rewritten. So there's six of them up there, and I want you to know how to get them all from the trig rainbow, but just be aware that there's really only three of them that are fundamental. The other three are just kind of rewriting the ones that you have up there. All right, now in addition to these six trig identities that you kind of get from the trig rainbow, there's a couple of others that are really important um, that you'll run into time and again. And that is the definition of the tangent function, tangent theta. Now here we've written it in terms of cotangent, and that's all true, but you should remember from Trig and Precal Volume 1 that the tangent function is always going to be equal to uh, the sine of whatever angle you have divided by the cosine of whatever angle. This is a fundamental fact. This basically comes from the fact that when you think about a tangent function in terms of triangles, you always think of tangent as being opposite over adjacent, right? And then when you think about the unit circle, the opposite side, the guy over here, is the sine because that's y, and the adjacent is the horizontal because that's along the x-axis. So really, when you put those two things together and you say, when you think about how tangents defined in terms of a triangle being opposite over adjacent, and then you know that opposite is a sine function and adjacent is a cosine function, then you put them together and you can always say that tangent of an angle is sine over cosine. All right. So I'm going to kind of box this in as a separate guy because it's very, very important. Now look what happens here. If we, uh, if we want to write a, uh, a cotangent function, what would cotangent be equal to? Cotangent of theta, right? Cotangent is one over tangent. That's sort of one of our fundamental things. You get it from our trig rainbow. So one over tangent of theta, right? So what would happen if we plug in what we know for tangent theta, sine, of theta over cosine theta. So what we have is one over the thing that we call sine over cosine. So this is a giant fraction. When you have one over a fraction on the bottom, then all you need to do is just kind of flip it over because this is kind of just a fraction division. It's a number divided by a fraction. So you just flip it over and multiply. So what you really get is cosine of theta over sine of theta. So this is what the cotangent function would look like. So these are kind of fundamental things. I mean, this is probably something you already know or, or have picked up from Trig and Precal Volume 1, and this kind of follows directly from it. I just show, sort of shows you where it comes from. Really what I want you to pull out from this board is three things. There's a trig rainbow that you can use to get all of these relations without any memorizing. And then you also need to know that the tangent is sine over cosine. Just remember it because it's going to come over and over again. The cotangent function is the flipped over result of this, cosine over sine. So if you ever see cotangent, you can just flip it over as cosine over sine. Tangent is always sine over cosine. Now what I'm going to do is leave these on the board, right? Kind of 
pristine off by themselves. We're not going to erase them. And we're going to go to this side of the board and work a couple of quick problems. And that's kind of how we're going to run the whole course. I'm going to present an identity, something that you'll be presented in your book, and then we'll work some problems to show you how to use that identity. So that you're not just kind of staring page after page of trig identities, you're kind of getting comfortable and familiar with how to use them and what they actually mean. So for the first guy, let's go ahead and do our first one. What we need to do here is prove the trig identity as follows. Cosine of theta times secant of theta is equal to 1. Now this is a, uh, a problem where we're trying to prove that this is true. And you'll get these kind of problems all the time in trig and precalculus. You'll be given some relation, some trigonometric relation, with an equal sign. But you really kind of need to put a question mark over the equal sign because what you're really trying to do is you're trying to prove that what's written on the board is true. Now, the good part of it is, is that if it's written like this, like prove the following, then you know it's true. So you know that, that there has to be a way to show that that's true. So that's kind of the nice thing about these problems. You always know if you've gotten the right answer because you, all, you know what the answer is already. You know that you have to show that that's true. And what you need to do is, is use any trig relation that you need to manipulate one side of this equal sign into showing that it's equal to the other side. And you can do anything you want. Any rules of algebra, any trigonometric identities, any other little tricks that you can come up with that are all legal. As long as you do them in a legal fashion, you need to show, show that one side of the equal sign is equal to the other. So what we're going to do is work on the left-hand side and, and do some substitutions and show that the left-hand side is actually equal to one which is, of course, what's on the right-hand side. So what we're going to do is, is begin to work on that. Now, the first thing we notice is that we have a cosine and a secant. There's many ways to solve these problems. But if I write my cosine here, cosine theta, I'm going to rewrite that just from above. Now, the secant, if I go over here to my rainbow, I say secant is 1 over cosine. Of course, I wrote it over here also, but using the trig rainbow, you just read it right off. Secant is 1 over cosine. Right? So in place of the secant, I can write 1 over cosine theta. Now I think you kind of see, because this is a very simple identity, what's really happening here. Because I rewrote secant in this fashion, the cosine theta cancels with the cosine theta. And on the left-hand side, all I'm going to have is 1. And on the right-hand side, all I'm going to have is 1. So this should be your final statement. And you can put a little check mark there to show that you've you know, verified that it's true. So what you've done is you've verified that this original expression is equal to one because you've used logical things to change the left-hand side and show that it's equal to one. All right, so that's sort of a general idea of how to use and how to work with a trig identity or how to prove a trig identity. Let's do one more. Let's say we have sine of theta times secant of theta is equal to tangent Theta. So again, it's kind of given to us that we know that this relation is true. It's up to you to choose a side of uh, either side, it doesn't really matter, but you need to choose one side of the equal sign and beat it into shape to prove that it's equal to the other side. So what we're going to do is, again, there's a million different ways to do it, but I'm going to just recopy my sine of theta down. And if I go to secant over here, Secant is 1 over cosine. Again, it's all written over there, but I can just look at my rainbow. Secant is 1 over cosine. So secant is 1 over cosine theta, right? So I'm, so I'm going to put an equal sign here. And again, continuing to manipulate this, since this is kind of like sine theta over 1, I can multiply these. So I'm going to have sine theta over cosine theta on the left-hand side. And what do we think sine over cosine is equal to? Well, we already talked about it. It's something you should already know anyway from volume one. Sine over cosine is always tangent of theta, and that's equal to the right-hand side, which is tangent theta. So we put a check mark, circle it if you like, and what you have shown is by a logical sequence of substitutions, the left-hand side is actually equal to tangent theta, uh, which is what you were trying to prove to begin with. All right, now what we're gonna do is go into the next section uh, he, uh, here in just a minute and prove some more identities that are going to require these uh, identities here. And then what we're going to do in sections beyond that is learn more and more different types of trig identities and give you practice with them. So uh, 
just keep in mind that as you watch all of these lessons, the goal of this set of lessons here, the goal of this course, is not to teach you trig identities for you to mem memorize them, honestly. We're going to get to, I mean, this is pretty easy to, to understand here, but we're going to get to identities in a few minutes that are just too long to memorize. I don't have them memorized. I mean, there's probably a dozen or so identities we're going to work with in, in real detail here. And I don't have them all memorized. That's what books are for. What you are trying to do is get comfortable with them. So when you open a book, you're not scared off by an identity so that you can kind of embrace it and say, okay, I understand how to use it. I don't remember it. I have to maybe look it up in a book, but I know how to use it. And I know how to properly put them into problems uh, to use them. Now, these problems were relatively simple, right? I mean, relatively simple, just one or two steps. In some of the identities coming up, we may have multiple steps. We may have to use more algebra. Right? We may have to use other uh, ways to kind of simplify it and make sure that it actually is proven to be true. But in all cases, what we're doing is using the identity to do a substitution to make the problem simpler and get closer to where we're trying to go. So follow me on to the next section where we're going to continue learning more and more trig identities, giving you practice with how to work with these trig identities. Uh, and believe me, what you want to do is be able to take these skills, take this knowledge, and be able to hone your skills so that when you get into calculus and you get into other classes beyond this one, you'll have these skills which will help you solve your problems faster and easier.